All right, so we've got a little bit of probability. Two types, experimental and theoretical probability. Well, first of all, theoretical. Theoretical are things like um, the probability of flip coin lands on heads is one out of two, which is what you would expect. This is a weird one. If there are 30 people in a room. The probability that two of them have the same birthday is 0.706. That means almost a 71% chance in a room of 30 that two people have the same birthday. That's kind of crazy, but it's actually true. While on a trip, you meet someone. After some conversation, you discover that you have a mutual acquaintance. The probability is actually high at just over 22% that that's actually true. That's crazy, too. All these theoretical are calculated using math. You know, you... I can show you using math and uh, statistics how that stuff comes to uh, comes about. And the way you do probability theoretical is you just put the number of ways, the number of possible outcomes on the bottom of your fraction, and the number of ways that the, an event can occur on the top. Very simple, just M over N. Uh, experimental is just the opposite. These are some examples of experimental. The probability that a woman will get breast cancer a lot of time is 1 out of 11. You can't do math to figure that out. That's just something we've seen from data in the past. If you kiss someone who has a code, the probability of you catching a code is 0 0.07. Again, that's just studying things that have happened before. A person who's just been released from prison has an 80% chance of returning. Again, that's just based on records we have. So it's discovered by observation and study of data, not um, on just doing the math. All right, probability of experimental is, the formula is exactly the same. Uh, given an experiment where you've made that many observations, that goes on the bottom, uh, if an event can occur, if it has occurred M times, then that's the probability, M over N. All right, let's try some here. Uh, the authors of this test conducted a survey to determine the number of people who are left-handed, right-handed, or both, and this is done in a study. Determine the probability the person is right-handed. And I'm looking at the picture down here that you can barely see. There you go. It's still small, but I think you can see it now. 100 people were in the study, and there were 82 of them were right-handed. So part A, we would say it was 82 out of 100. We would always reduce when we can, so 41 out of 50. Part B, left-handed. There were 17 in the study, so 17 out of 100. That does not reduce. C, ambidextrous. Uh, both hands equal, just one out of 100. And then part D, there are 120 bowlers in most tournaments. How many would be left-handed? Well, you would take your 17 over 100, or 17%, or 17.17, multiply it by the 120, and that's going to tell you exactly what it is. I'm punching that in right now, and it is 20.4, so we would say 20, about 20 of them. All right, dart throwing. Uh, Consider this dart board. Assume that the experiment is throwing a dart and the dart and that the dart hits the board. Find each of the following. What are the outcomes? Well, the outcomes are you, you would either hear red or white or black. That's all that could happen. Now, what they're trying to get you to see here is this word right here, the sample space, is exactly the same as all the outcomes. So the sample space, we write it usually in brackets. I'm just going to use the letters red, white, and black really the exact same thing they're trying to get you to see that the sample space is are or is all the possible outcomes same thing here uh, rolling a die uh, has six faces there's pictures here number of dots from one to six what are the outcomes so the outcomes are one two three four five six that's all the outcomes so what are the sample space the same thing one two three four five six that's the sample space just a Take, this is just a word or term that they like to use when they're doing probability is sample space. All right, example five. Suppose that we select without looking one marble from a bag containing three reds and four greens. What's the probability we selecting a red? Okay, this is the math. This is theoretical. There are seven marbles all together. That always goes on the bottom. How many of them are our event or, or, or are red? There are three of them, and that's it. Three out of seven. That's a real tough thing. Uh, next one, what is the probability of drawing an ace from a well shuffled deck of cards? If you don't know your cards very well, that's that's all of them. Pretty cool pick. And look at the aces right here. There are four aces. There are 52 cards. So it's four out of 52. Always reduce. And that reduces down to one over 13. Okay, a few properties here that you really need to know. If an event cannot occur, meaning it's impossible, the probability of that event is zero. If an event has to occur, 
the probability of that event is one. So the probability of any event that will occur is some number between zero and one. Zero being impossible, one being for certain, and everything in between is okay, but probability must be between zero and one. All right, getting a little fancy here. Uh, suppose that two cards are drawn from a well shuffled deck, shuffled deck of 52. Was it probably that both of them are spades? All right. First of all, on the bottom, if I do this, if I do a combination, which we did the other day, that is all the ways you can draw two cards out of 52. I mean, that's all of them. Now, we also saw a few minutes ago that there are 13 spades. So this is how many ways you can draw 13 spades out of I mean, two, two out of the 13 spades. So I'll hit my calculator and punch both of those in. 13, C, 2, divided by 52, C, 2. Sorry about this, take a minute. And I get this right here. Well, I'm going to change it to a fraction. I got a decimal. Let's see if I can change it to a fraction. I can. 1 17th. 1 out of 17 chance if you draw two cards that you get uh, two spades. Now, one thing real quick again. The number on the bottom, the C represents all the possible, all the combinations of two cards you could draw. And on the top, all the combinations of two spades you could draw. Okay, two more here. I uh, suppose that three men, three people are selected at random from a group that consists of six men and four women. What is the probability to draw one man and two women? So, first of all, we're drawing three people out of ten. So, the total is these are all the different ways, combinations of three people we could get. From 10. Now to get one man there are um, six men so you would do six one man out of six would be that one and there's the word and remember anytime you see the word and in this chapter we're always thinking about multiplying so and um, two women there are four women all together choosing two of them so I'm gonna kind of explain to you how I set this up again on the bottom is always a total I'm picking three out of the total of ten people and on the top, just the event. The event is one of the men out of six and two of the women out of four. So again, I'm going to punch all that in. Calculator. Um, six C1 times four C2. Put those in parentheses divided by 10 C3. And I get three tenths, three out of ten chance. So what we're doing on those last two slides is we're using combinations. Anytime you're picking groups instead of just one thing, usually you're going to use the combinations or permutations occasionally. All right, last one here. Rolling two dice, what is the probability of getting a total of eight on a roll of a pair of dice? Okay, so when you roll the first dice, you have six different outcomes you could get. Simple space is six, one through six. The second one is also six. So if you roll two of them, you have six times six, or you have 36 different possibilities you could get. So that's gonna be my denominator. 36 different outcomes when you roll three, I mean two dice, so 36. Now, what I gotta come up with next is how many different ways can I get an eight? And if you look at the chart or the picture over here, what I've done is highlighted all the ways you can get an eight. Two, six, three, five, four, four, five, three, six, two. That is five ways. So it's five out of 36 ways you could get a uh, eight when you roll two die. So work on this in class tomorrow like we always do. Just a lot of probability that the problems aren't very long. They don't take long to do. The, the key to these is knowing what to do when you see one. And we'll work enough of these where you will get really good at it. So I'll see you in class tomorrow. See you bye.